No, it's Pokemon time. The first and second generations of Pokemon games were revolutionary. These three were the best selling Game Boy games ever, and they're still the best selling Pokemon games to date. Gold and Silver's in third place on that list after Sword and Shield. Crystal doesn't seem to get a mention. I don't know if that's lumped in with these two or not. Now the problem with these cartridges is that the save file might just disappear one day. If you've got Gold, Silver or Crystal, and this has never been addressed, your saves are gone. None of these survive. A lot of these guys are still going though. Game saves haven't always been as simple as just hitting save and it gets written to the cartridge or to a memory card or to the system itself. In the early days of game saves, it gave you a password. You had to write down the password so that you could enter it back in next time you turned the game on. And that's because if you wanted rewritable memory, you had to have a floppy disk or a hard drive or something like that. Flash memory wasn't really a thing. Obviously those aren't an option for most game systems and that's why the password system was made. But eventually games started to have what's called battery backed memory. In these cartridges, that's this guy. The first time this was ever used in a video game was The Legend of Zelda in 1986 on the original Nintendo. And it really didn't phase out until the 2000s. Now the problem is, this battery here is not rechargeable. And even if it was, it would still have a lifespan. And when this battery eventually goes flat, this chip loses power and your save is gone. So I'm gonna show you how to change this battery without losing your save file. The first thing you're going to need is a special bit to remove the security screw. These are normally sold as game bit. They're a bit like an external Torx screw. So sometimes they'll be listed as as e -talks, but they actually don't conform to that standard. So a game bit or Nintendo screwdriver or whatever, just have a look on the internet, you'll find something. It's important to know that there's two sizes though, and the games take the smaller size. They often sell as a pair, so buy both just to be sure. One way is to buy a device that will let you back up your save game to a computer and then copy it back after you've changed the battery. But there's a much cheaper and quicker way if you don't mind a little bit of extra soldering. And the reason why I said, if you've got gold, silver and crystal, your save's gone if it hasn't been touched, is because these have a little bit of extra circuitry here. And what that is, is the real time Time clock. The Game Boy didn't have the ability to set the time on the system, so games that wanted to use the time for in-game events and stuff had to have a clock built into the cartridge which ran all the time. It's just like having a digital clock with no screen. That means each time the game starts up, it can see what time it is and how long it's been since you played. This game even tells you what time it is in the game. It seems like pretty basic stuff now, but that was new technology back then. However, the clock uses more power, so now we're running the clock and the memory chip. These batteries were going flat within 10 years of the game being launched. All the hours I spent on Pokemon Gold as a kid gone. But these two guys are still going strong even though they're older. It's just that real time clock that's done it. These three are actually my childhood games, which is why I'm still keeping this mangled up copy of Pokemon Red. My dog chewed this game up and I had to cut some of the plastic off so that it would even fit in my Game Boy still. But luckily it still works perfectly. And it's kind of weird that it's a USA copy. They must have filled out Australian stock with some US copies. It definitely would have sold more than they'd expected. You're going to need two batteries for this. Make sure they have the solder tabs because soldering directly to the battery is not a good idea. I have done it before and about one in three, the plastic seal around the battery fails and nasty smelling liquid and gas comes out. Just don't do that. First you want to add a bit of solder to the terminals on both batteries. This is the side of the terminal that's going to be on the board. Next you want to solder some wires to one of the battery. Keep them nice and long, we're not going to leave it there, it's just temporary. Once we've got a wire on each of the sides of one of the batteries, we want to solder that to the board so that when we remove the original battery, power is not lost. The way to do this so that the wires don't just fall off when you remove this battery is to find an alternative point for the positive and negative sides of the battery. Different cartridge versions might be different. So don't just use the same points I've used. You can see the traces through the green solder mask. Have a look at where these solder points attach and make sure you go to a point that's connected to that. Be careful with these batteries because only one side is labeled. It's a positive side, the other side is negative. I don't really have a good place for the positive wire, but this tiny resistor does connect to the positive side of the battery. I'm going to very carefully solder to there. On very small solder joints, it'll help if you add a bit of solder to the end of your wires too. Now I have my temporary battery connected to the cartridge. It means that I can just remove the original battery. Just do one side at a time and it'll be easy. Whenever you're desoldering something, don't pull hard on anything. Just let it lift off when it's ready. Now add a bit more solder to the battery pads. Recheck positive and negative again, just to be absolutely certain. It is written on the board here, negative, positive, because even with the other battery connected up correctly, if you accidentally put this one in backwards, it'll still wipe your save. Some batteries also might have these tabs in a different orientation. If yours has positive on the top with this leg bent down, that's fine as long as you match up positive and negative still. Hold it in place, just heat through the top of the tabs. If yours looks like this, with solder just spread around it and not float over the top, add some more solder. It should flow nicely onto the battery tabs. Now that you have the new battery soldered down, you can disconnect the temporary battery. You don't actually need to completely reassemble the cartridge to test it. You just need to put the circuit board in the back cover. We've still got a save. 
So let's see what Pokemon I had back then. Aha, uh -huh. a level 243 Marowak, a level 140 Golduck, a level 100 Mew, a level 100 Vaporeon, and a level 100 Raichu. Yeah, I had nothing against cheating back in those days. I like to play games a bit more purely now. The maximum level is supposed to be 100. This Mew is interesting though. OTNAL, it's Original Trainer Nintendo Australia Limited. I got this Mew from the Poketour in 1999. I took my Game Boy game in there, plugged it into their machine, and it transferred me a Mew. And then I ruined it with rare candies. So hopefully my save's gonna be good for another 25 years. Except it probably won't, because finding good quality batteries in Australia is really hard. All the reputable distributors online say they don't ship to Australia. It must be because they're lithium batteries and there's restrictions on that sort of stuff. These are straight off eBay. I think they're called Eurocells or something. I wonder who they're trying to pretend to be there. If you've backed up your save to a computer or it's already lost, you can just heat the old battery straight off, add solder to the board, heat your new battery on there, then whack your cartridge back together. Skip, 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 skip. Your name is Oak, yes, Pokemon Prof. Start, start, start. This start button's gone dodge since I made this thing. Serve. Yes. Now, should we have to turn it off? Pull the game out, wait a little while. Plug the air back in, turn it on. And it's there. It knows what time it is, and my save file is here. James with no badges and no time. Now at this point, some of you are probably thinking, hey, there's another mod. You can get rid of the battery and never have to worry about losing your save file. And you're right. There's something called a FRAM mod, which I assume is flash RAM. There's a chip that's designed to go instead of some battery-backed RAM chips, and it can be made to work on Game Boy cartridges, but it's not 100% compatible, and even the best versions of the mod still have some issues to iron out before I'm willing to recommend that you do them. They work perfectly fine in all of the Nintendo hardware except the Pokemon Stadium transfer pack. If you try and play it on Pokemon Stadium on an American or Japanese console, it'll just delete your save file. And the same goes with some of the hardware that copies the game save to a computer. I borrowed a Retrode so I could back up some of my games. And in my research, I found that if I did the batteryless mod on one of these and then tried to back it up on here, it would just delete the save file. And you can't read or write the save file unless you do a temporary mod on the cartridge just while you're using the Retrode. So for now, just keep changing your batteries. But if you have an idea for a non-volatile memory mod for these Game Boy games, which has 100% compatibility. Works on the Retroid, works on NTSC Pokemon Stadium. I wanna hear about it because I would love to do that on these cartridges. I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera because I want all of these to work. But now you know how to change the battery in a game cartridge without losing your save. And the same method works on other cartridges, even for other consoles. Just gotta make sure you get the right size battery and make sure you're not putting a non-rechargeable in place of rechargeable. And now I get to thank my patrons. This is new to me. Massive thanks to these people especially who are my top tier patrons. I'm a pretty serious game collector and on Patreon, I share a photo of every single video game thing I get. So if you want to see, it's a dollar a month. Link in the description.